Hey there. So this is uh, a really simple little tutorial for uh, kind of what MIDI mixer is and, and what it achieves, I suppose. Um, so I've got in front of me here my MIDI device. This is a, a Behringer X-Touch Mini. Um, it's pretty cheap, uh, pretty standard. Um, a lot of people will have the Nano Control 2 as well. Um, I think that's that's much more popular. Um, but strictly speaking, uh, MIDI mixer will work with anything um, and you can configure it all yourself. Um, but what we're going to do in this video is go through the basic functionality. Um, so you see I've got, this is the MIDI mixer UI right here. Um, it's recognized that I've plugged in my Behringer X-Touch um, and it's given me a list of control groups. So I've got rotary 1 all the way through to rotary 8 which is 1 to 8 here and then I've got a master fader at the bottom um, which is this master fader on the edge. So right now nothing's happening. Um, it doesn't do anything. Um, but over here, we're going to look, this is the Windows volume mixer. Um, and I've got Google Chrome here. Um, there's a, a window in the background that's got this lo-fi, lo-fi jazz hop stuff. Um, it's not playing yet, but we've got this. So really easily, um, I've got a, uh, control group here, which consists of this little rotary, um, and this little button. Um, and I've I've put my own little label on there that says browser because this is the one that I like to use if I change my browser volume. Um, so if I go to rotary number six in the UI and click, see we get a nice little list of all of the things we can assign this to. So we've got some um, items, OBS Studio I'm using to record this, Google Chrome, um, all the devices as well. Um, I'm going to choose Google Chrome. And you see straight away the, uh, the lights on the board uh, lit up with the current volume. So if I remove that again, lights will disappear. And if I add it back, lights will reappear. Really, really cool. Um, as well, if I move that, you'll see three things. First off, the lights here will react to exactly what the volume is. Um, secondly, over in the Windows Mixer, it's definitely turning Google Chrome up and down. Um, and in the top left, we've got um, an OSD, an on-screen display. Um, so accepting things like uh, full screen games, uh, this will show above any windows. Um, so you can see exactly what you're changing the volume for, right? Um, so this is really cool. This is really, really cool. Um, and as well, this works both ways. So I've got my windows volume mixer here. Let's say I manually do this or something else does this. So apps like Skype or Discord will uh, dip the volume of certain applications. Um, if that happens, you see if I change the volume on the board, the lights are going up and down, 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 um, which is really cool. As well, this works both ways. So this little button here is the mute button for this rotary. So if I mute it, you see the OSD pops up to tell me it's muted. It's now muted in Windows Volume Mixer. Um, and the light is on, on the mute button. And if I click the mute button in the Windows Mixer, just toggle that off now. You see the light disappears there. That'd be a bit sunny. There you go. So if I get Chrome up and just play this, it's muted right now. I'm going to turn it down first and then unmute. And we've got a thing. So we can turn that all the way down, turn it all the way up to whatever you want, mute it, unmute it. And as well, whatever we do, if we turn it up all the way in Windows Mixer, it'll appear on the board. Now, we'll go over this in another video, um, but Windows Mixer here, um, sorry, this this um, this volume indicator showing, that can be anything. So on this particular board, it doesn't have any fancy stuff like motorized faders, um, but it could be a motorized fader. It could automatically set the position of that motorized fader for you instead of showing these lights. Um, completely customizable by you. You don't have to write any code. There's a nice UI built in for you to do cool things like that. Um, as well, let's say, uh, I don't want to, uh, you know, open up the UI. Uh, this is a really nice thing inspired by an app called NK2 tray. Um, so if I, if I go to my little tray menu here and find mini mixer and right click it, um, we have, uh, the MIDI device that we're using at the moment. So it's, it's figured that out. Uh, we have some options here, but the main thing is we've got all these options for faders. Um, so these are exactly the same control groups that you see in the UI on the left. Um, you see Rotary 6 is assigned to Google Chrome. Um, 
And if I want to, I can assign that to none and remove it. I reflect in the UI, the light will disappear. Um, so what I could do, for example, as well, if I go to rotary six again, um, I could assign this, my main output device is actually this voice meter input device. If I click that, um, it's now assigned to my main device. And if I change that, you see it's changing that in Windows Mixer, which then affects all items playing through that device. Um, this works with microphones too. I could assign this to my, my line in um, and I can change the, the volume of that um, in, you know, in Windows, which is really, really cool. Um, so let's say, I mean, I'm only right now, I'm only controlling a single application. I'm just controlling Google Chrome. Uh, we have all this space for all this stuff. Um, so let's try opening Spotify. Uh, so that's a really cool, uh, the really cool thing we can do here. So, um, mini mixer can actually assign, uh, any buttons on the board or any input at all. You can make it so that when you, you know, spin a certain rotary, it performs a certain action. Um, but one of the things that we can do is say on, you know, when this button is pressed, um, do any number of things. So there's some easy default things. If we go to the quick assign menu here, there's a buttons option. And we can see we've got uh, media keys. So that'd be the play key, the stop key, record, rewind, and fast forward. We've got the MC key, which is this one on the left here, a blank key, which is this one, and a loop key, which is this one in the middle. Um, so what I wanna do is I wanna make it so my MC key opens Spotify. Um, so if, you know, if I went around and, and added that for every single program in the universe, it would take me infinite amount of time. But MC key, go down, hit run file, and this can open any file you want. So as an example, I could hit Mac wallpaper.jpg here, hit open, and you'll see my MC key on the board is now lit up. That means it's assigned to an action. It can do something. If I hit it, it opens up that wonderful image, right? So it just opens up whatever you choose. Um, so let's assign that instead to, um, this is my start menu um, folder. So all the items that are in my start menu on here. And there's a Spotify shortcut. So I'm just gonna select that and hit open. Notice it's still assigned. And if I hit it now, Spotify opens. Really, really cool. Um, so now I should be able to, we can play some Spotify music. Um, so let's say now um, I actually want to, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm having to click on all these videos. A really basic thing and a really basic thing all these boards have is, is media keys. So you saw that there. I can go into buttons, media, and the play key and assign that to the media play function. And then that's lit up on the board. And if I hit play, it will play or pause the selected thing. Um, and we can do we can do this for for all of the simple media keys. So rewind over here. Let's make that previous track. And do, 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 do. fast forward, let's make that next track. So they're all assigned now. You can see they're all assigned. Um, and if I go around, see it's going next track, previous track, and play and pause. Really cool stuff. So the next thing as well um, is let's say, you know, I've just opened up this application and um, I, I want to assign. I want to assign it to one of these items. I don't want to have to, you know, go down here and figure out which one I want to do or go into the UI. Um, you can assign them with, with a button on the board too. So whatever you have in focus, uh, in this case, it's my Spotify window. Uh, I'm going to take the board and I'm going to press down on this. So again, this is, this is customizable. Um, for this, I want to do it when I press down. You can set it to anything. You can make it a sign when you hit the stop button. Um, or a button over here, or when you move the slider up, you can do anything. But for right now, if I push this down, you can see it's now signed to Spotify. So in the MIDI mixer application, it says Spotify, um, and you see the lights have come on representing the actual volume. And if I um, go back and, and I can unassign it, and you'll see it kind of toggling to and fro. And then I can control the volume of Spotify. And I can play it, control it, um, let's play our Google Chrome thing too and turn them both way the hell down because they're really loud. Um, so that that's that's really awesome. Makes it really easy to use. You don't have to ever touch the UI really. Once you've got it set up, you can just 
use it as is. Um, another really cool thing that uh, that people find they want to do a lot, like one big request is like, oh, can I make can I make groups of um, of applications? So uh, a lot of people who who play a lot of games perhaps want to have, let's say, this master fader always controls the game that you're playing, right? So games are typically full screen applications; they take up absolutely everything. They're in the foreground all the time. Um, and so they say, you know, I want to add my, my World of Warcraft and my Call of Duty and, and Fortnite or whatever it is, right? And group them all so they're all affected by this slider. Um, what you can do instead of that is uh, add what's called a focus assignment. So if I go to this, this master fader down here, you see right at the top there's focus. Um, if I select that, then whatever application I'm focused on at the time, um, it will change the volume of that. So if I change this now, you'll see actually it's figured out. So in the top left of the OSD, you can see that it's uh, said that it's affecting the focus and that focus is Spotify. Um, and then it's showing Rotary 4 changing too. And in fact, if you look down on the board, you can see that the volume of Spotify is changing as I'm moving this focus slider. And that's because I'm focused on Spotify. So if I keep moving the slider and I go over to Google Chrome, you see that now it's affecting Google Chrome instead, the OSD is updated. Um, and with this focus slider too, this mute button is uh, is this key here. So if I go ahead and mute, uh, you'll see that Google Chrome's mute button is toggling along with that. And that works both ways. So if I toggle uh, Google Chrome's mute over here, the focus mute button figures out that uh, it's been muted, like the foreground application has been muted and, and so it reacts to that. So there's some really cool things you can do with that. Um, and the, the, the main one is definitely for, for um, you know, people playing games and streamers. If you start up a game, you've never played it before, you don't have to go and assign it to, to the board. You can just really, really quickly go whoop, with a slider um, and it will, it will change the volume of, of, of that right then there, uh, which is really, really cool. So there's a few other pieces to this. Um, one, we have this little settings page. We can turn the OSD on and off. We can toggle the extended edition, um, which is like the the extra controls that it shows at the bottom there. Um, we can change the position on the screen. We can change the screen that it appears on. Um, make it start and boot. One really cool one is the is the log uh, logarithmic um, volume curve. So if I play this very loud video, so you'll notice as soon as I toggle that on a little bit. So that's a single little tweak. It's really it's really quite loud. So this is because um, the human perception of, of hearing is not linear. It's not just zero to 100%. And actually, you're much more sensitive to the smaller changes in volume at the, at the lower end of volume um, than you are to the higher ones. So actually, when you're using something like Spotify, for example, um, about zero to 20 will make the most difference. And then from 20 to 100 really is, is actually quite difficult to, to figure out. Um, so this app has a, a logarithmic curve built in. Um, it's actually on by default. I turned it off so it was a bit easier to see the, the volume mixer and, and kind of understand the positions there. Um, but if we turn that on, let's, let's set these volumes to, to 50% in the, in the volume mixer. Well, I should do it here really. <laughs> And if I toggle it on, you'll see that the lights change when I toggle it on and off. Um, and that's because uh, at 50%, actually, um, in terms of what we what we hear, um, the volume really is at about 75% there. And you'll see now, if I turn this down using the controller, it says it's about 50% on the board, but in the volume mixer, it's about, what, 20, 25%? Um, and so this last 50%, you have loads of control um, over how quiet it is, which means now if I turn it all the way down, start my video again, and I slowly crank it up. And it's a lot nicer to control. Now, this um, this isn't, this is something that's quite hard to, um, quite hard to get across um, if you haven't used something like this before. Um, 
to control volumes because a lot, well, the, the majority of people have everything on 100% and they adjust the volume of their of their headset, right? Um, but once you start actually being able to control this a lot more easily, um, you realize that that you end up having your volumes at such low levels all the time because that's the level where it's making the most difference. So this is a really cool this is a really cool option for that. Um, the last point that I want to make in this video, um, so there's there's a a mapper UI where we have presets. We can do everything. This is the configuration for this entire board is built in this UI. Um, there's a few presets built in that we can expand on as people add their own presets. Um, that will be another video. Um, hopefully it'll be linked somewhere now, or if it's not, it'll be in the description. Um, but one thing I really want to talk about is this, this run file thing for buttons. So right now we're using it to open Spotify. We've used it to open a JPEG. Um, but really it could do anything because it can open any file. It could open a um, bash script. It could open a auto hotkey script. Um, this means that any functionality that you want your board to be able to do on the press of a button or when you move a particular um, you know, uh, encoder or, or change a slider, um, you can make it run any arbitrary file on your system and then therefore take any arbitrary action. Um, you can make it so you press a button and your screen dims down to 50% brightness using an auto hotkey script. Um, there's a, a fellow that's using this at the moment who's uh, got got it set up with a program called NERCMD so that when he presses a certain button, it switches between two default audio devices, which incidentally is a feature that I want to add to Mini Mixer at some point in the future anyway. But it just goes to show that you can do any single action with this, um, which is really, really cool. And that means that the possibilities are endless. You can have it also controlling um, OBS on top um, or anything else um so that's really really exciting um and i i hope people are as, as equally as excited um as i am about this um and yeah if you want to if you want to have a look at how to map your own device for this and how to do some crazy things as well so um because you can do you know anything you want with it you can make it so that uh, if I change this this focus slider up and down, it's actually cross-fading between two apps. So this would be Chrome at 100%, Spotify at 0%, and this would be Spotify at 0%, uh, 100% and Chrome at 0%, um, and cross-fade between the two, right? You, you can do anything you want in it, um, including as well, one of the cool things is making it so that you have two mini devices actually communicating with each other. So you could have... MIDI device A turning a rotary and then showing the representation of that on MIDI device B um, and then being able to do MIDI device B and hit A and vice versa. Um, the possibilities are pretty endless with this um, and I'm hoping hoping everyone will find some cool things. Um, so yeah, check out the links in the description, check out the website, um, go download a version, see if it works for you um, and have a good one.